So the flip side of um, what Madison provides in terms of um, making solar more affordable, not just in terms of savings, but um, are revenue opportunities. And there are three things that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, the first is the Madison uh, rebate, um, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute. And then uh, the other two are time of use rates and renewable energy uh, credits. And these are um, opportunities that um, are, in some cases, automatic to your participation in the program, or almost all automatic. In others, um, you'll certainly have to do work to take advantage of. Um, but again, we'll talk more about uh, things like time of use and renewable energy credits in uh, just a few minutes here. In terms of the how the Madison uh, rebate works, um, we've negotiated um, basically an additional discount um, for you as the total group purchase gets higher, um, above and beyond um, what we have already uh, been able to secure for discounted pricing. Um, this, this discount essentially takes the form of a rebate and works when the total program enrollment gets to about 50 kilowatts. Um, at this point, you'll, uh, the point of which the total program enrollment reaches about uh, 50 kilowatts, which we estimate to be somewhere between um, about 15 and, and maybe 18 homeowners, um, participants, um, you will receive, if you're in that first group, or actually if you're in, at any point in participating in the program, you get a discount, or in this case, it'll actually be in the form of, again, a rebate check of $100 per kilowatt of solar that you've purchased. Um, then for any additional um, homeowners, about um, 15 or so homes that join the program, which again is um, going to be about another 50 kilowatts um, that follow through and uh, join the program and, and contract to get solar installed, um, you receive in another $100 per kilowatt that you've purchased. So for example, if you um, participating in the program and total enrollment ends up being, let's say, 65 kilowatts, um, then you'll, uh, and you've purchased a three kilowatt system, then sometime after the program enrollment finishes and the last person um, that has enrolled is contracted to complete their solar installation, you'll receive a rebate check of around $300. So it's really um, an incentive that is trying to encourage you as participants to help um, encourage others and to tell other people um, to uh, learn about the program and to hopefully join and participate because there is a direct uh, financial benefit to you as a participant um, in doing so. What happens is that the most cost-effective way to build a solar system these days is not to have any batteries involved. It's called grid connected. So your solar panels connect up through your, can connect up through your existing which actually probably has to be upgraded to a bi-directional meter. So when your house is not using any electricity, uh, everybody's at work, the air conditioning isn't on, the lights are all turned off, the washing machine isn't running, you may actually be turning your meter backwards. Your solar panels in the middle of the afternoon when everyone's off at school and at work uh, will be pushing electricity out to the grid. So that it'll be essentially running your meter backwards. It'll be reducing the amount of money you omg need that month. Then later in the day, the sun's gone down, you've all come home from work and from school, you're making dinner, running the washer, running the dishwasher, you're using quite a bit of electricity. Then your meter runs in the forward direction and you're charged electricity. What happens then is that over the course of the month, sometimes you're making more than you're using, sometimes you're using more than you make, and it nets out the total production against the total consumption, and your bill only reflects the difference so that you're solar power has reduced your monthly bill by however many kilowatts you generate. Great. Um, well, that leads us, uh, I think, naturally then into um, Alicia. And uh, Alicia, again, is from uh, Seventh Generation Energy Systems. Um, Alicia, feel free to introduce uh, Seventh Generation. And um, the purpose of our, her presentation is to talk more about that, uh, those revenue opportunities that I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation and how you can take advantage of both time of use rates and what are called solar renewable energy credits. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Uh, hello, folks. I'm from 7th Generation Energy, and we're a nonprofit. And we've been doing solar and wind energy in Wisconsin mainly in Wisconsin since um, about 2002. And we've come up with some sort of creative ways to make 
uh, renewable energy pay for itself a little more quickly. Um, and I'm going to talk about two of them. First is the time of use rate. And the basics of the time of use rate is that it, the when electricity costs more to produce, which is mainly during business hours, um, during the week, uh, and a lot of people are using electricity, uh, then you also are compensated by the solar energy you produce at the same rate. So that's the gist of it, but we're going to talk about the general of it. Um, and it is an optional rate for anyone who uses less than 300 kilowatt hours per month, which is most residences. And the principle of it is a lower off-peak electricity cost and a higher on-peak electricity cost. Again, on-peak is when there are the most people using the most electricity. It costs more to produce each kilowatt hour of electricity. And then it's a beneficial rate for folks that have moderate usage during daytime hours on weekdays. So if you are either able to control your usage during the day on weekdays um, or you're not home at all and you can just pretty much reduce it to near nothing, it's very beneficial uh, whether you whether you install solar panels or not. Okay, go ahead, Brian. So this is the basic uh, graph, so you can understand both when on if you're if you go to a time of use rate, both when you'll be on a time of use rate versus a regular um, rate versus I guess versus an off peak rate. So right now everyone is on most likely unless someone there is on a time of use rate already. Uh, everyone is on a regular residential rate, and you're paying about. 12 to 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And um, I hope that most of you have taken a look at your electricity bills now and you know what you're using um, in a month and have some idea of what, what kind of loads or appliances you have in your house that's using how much. So this is, it's pretty simple. You can see from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, that's the on-peak time. And the cost at that time is 23 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, the rest of the time, the blue time, is just 6.7 cents per kilowatt hour. And also, if you're producing electricity or you have net generation, um, you're making more energy with your solar panels than you're using during the on-peak times, uh, is you are also getting credited 23 cents per kilowatt hour, which is much higher than your normal rate of of 13 cents. And um, Brian, go ahead and do it for that. So uh, the the thing to notice about solar panels, if you're on a time of use rate and you, you're using a time of use meter, um, is that they produce power mostly during on-peak hours since the hours of 10 to 9 p.m., especially during the summer when you're producing the most power. Uh, is almost coincides completely with the on-peak hours, except, of course, the weekends. So solar power works very well for this. Um, and again, the excess power that is credited at the more expensive rate of uh, an average of 23 cents. And again, in the summer, it, the on-peak rate is about 25 cents per kilowatt hour because there are so many people using air conditioners during that time. So the power is, is worth a lot more. And if you are producing, again, more than you're uh, consuming, you'll be credited at that 25 cents per kilowatt hour. And so the, the investment in the solar, if you can go on a time of use rate, um, you'll, the solar will be valued higher because you're generating specifically when the power is more expensive and electric, electric usage is highest. And I should also say that uh, if you choose to go on a time of use rate, it's a pretty simple process with MG&E, and they will come out, and you, you need to request it, and you'll get a letter, and um, and you'll sign it that you understand, and then they'll put a time of use meter um, at no charge to you. Alicia, we just got a question uh, that may be a relevant time. Is, um, is this also something that is available for Alliant customers? 
Uh, yep, there is an alliance time of use rate, although I don't know what it is. Offhand, I could find out very easily, though. I'm sure I have it in my computer. So. Okay, so and, if John, um, John wants it, to contact you afterwards, um, he can just email you and, uh, and correspond yeah. about what the alliance uh, uh, time of use rate is. My sense is it's probably pretty similar. MG&E's is pretty hefty, actually. Okay. It is pretty good, pretty good, especially for solar. So it may be that the Alliance time of use on peak is less and the off peak is less. That's usually how it is. Okay. And I just got another question. Someone um, asked that they, they thought that the MG&E rate at 25 cents per kilowatt was expired in August um, when it filled up. So I think they're no, confuse, confusing to, to a little bit. Of, <laughs> yep. But actually, that's that's a, actually a really interesting point. That was a very special buyback program that, as Larry said, uh, they maxed out at, at, at 1,000 kilowatts, and that's closed. You can no longer sign up for that. However, you can get kind of close. Um, actually, that was for all kilowatt hours generated. So this, this would be somewhere in between. If you can go on a time of use rate, any time that you're producing more than you're consuming, you will and you'll still get that 25 cent per kilowatt hour. And that's not just for 10 years. You'll actually get the on-peak, um, whatever the on-peak cost is for the life of your system. So if it goes up to 50 cents per kilowatt hour 10 years from now, you'll also be credited that. Not a fixed rate. OK, go ahead. I'm going to try to run through these because it's almost 8 o'clock. And, and I will welcome people. Uh, to, to contact me with any question at all, any time, because this, um, this is what we enjoy doing. So um, the challenge really is to try to see if you can get onto a time of use rate. You can save money whether or not you end up going with solar. And so you need your elect electric bill history. You need to estimate your on and off peak with the percentage of on and off peak with a few simple tools. Um, and then you can work with 7th Gen, if you like, uh, with me specifically, to analyze that outcome. And we can do some scenarios around usage and generation, and also um, solar installation to see what your payback might be. So this is just an idea um, here. But just a couple of months, you can see in January, when you have the least amount of solar production, and in July, when you have the most, we'll go through January 1st. Um, the on peak, the usage is is on peak is 114 kilowatt hours, and the usage off peak is 265 kilowatt hours. In January, with the size of the system, um, that we're, this is you would be producing only 31 kilowatt hours on peak, which is definitely not uh, over your um, <laughs> and 17 off peak. So in January, you're going to end up still paying uh, $18.98 for that electricity. The, val the solar value of that is about $7, but you still end up paying an electricity bill. Now, the same size system in the same place uh, in July, you can see if your usage during on-peak is 106 and your um, usage off-peak is 246, you can see the resulting, well, now, in July, you're producing 200. You're producing 300 kilowatts total, which is 200 kilowatt hours more than you're using, and uh, 163 kilowatt hours that you're producing off peak, which is probably weekend hours. But um, so it does have some value. You the total net value again is almost 70 dollars. Then uh, and then you you're actually getting a credit on your monthly electricity bill for July of $45. And so you can see over time, that can um, help pay down your system more quickly. 